right? So you have to have an appropriate amount of background knowledge as well. So what are comprehension strands within the fifth strand of, of reading? We have other strands. We have main idea strands. We have detail strands. We have cause and effect and inference and interpretation. But we have to teach all of these directly, explicitly, sequentially. And these are some of the, the these are different um, techniques for teaching comprehension, different packages or, or strategies. We're really excited this year uh, for our upper elementary school, for our fifth and sixth graders, and for our middle school and for our high school. We're introducing a new curriculum that we did a lot of due diligence on over the last year and a half or so, and bringing keys to literacy. Keys to Literacy is a study skills comprehension um, program that is consistent across the curriculum. So we can, we'll use it in science, <coughs> we'll use it in social studies, we'll use it in math, <coughs> we'll use it in literature, and it's, it, it, it's an explicit um, system to help kids learn to comprehend and, 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 and learn study skills. I've also used reciprocal reading as a great uh, uh, strategy two, where kids model questioning of one another, and these are others as well. We won't spend a lot of time there. Now we're getting into, we, so we just covered core instruction. Quality core instruction was the phonemic awareness through comprehension that we went just discuss. Okay, now we're moving into the second of the four components of this literacy framework that we've implemented at Groves, and that is database decision making. Okay, in, in instruction, there are, there are five variables, but I'm not going to count the teacher, even though the teacher is probably the most important variable. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to count four different variables of instruction. The instruction itself, the curriculum that we're using, the intensity of the instruction, right? So by intensity, I mean really how big is the class size? It's a very different experience if you have uh, 32 kids in a third grade class learning to read than it is if you have four, right? It's just common sense. So what's the most intense instruction a student can receive? One. One on one. Two of them, right? So that's, uh, that's one variable. Frequency. How often is that instruction given? Is it daily? Uh, and duration. How long does that instruction go on for? Okay, and then how long does that instruction have to go on? Not only two duration questions, how long is the period of, of instruction they're getting? And then equally important, how long into the future does that have to go um, to have the student catch up to be at grade level? So these are the variables that we can play with. I can play with the teacher variable too, but it's actually more disruptive unless the teacher is really bad it's more disruptive to let a teacher go in the middle of the year and start over again than it is to adjust these other variables. Okay, so this is what we use at Groves, and this is what I mean by uh, database decision, objective decision making. Every Friday, um, our students in the lower school and the middle school are given a one minute fluency drill. Okay, and this is standardized across thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. So I know that in the, at any month of any grade, how many words correct a student should be reading at the 50th percentile, at the 75th percentile, at the 90th percentile, okay? So I can tell you that in February of first grade, that a child should be reading 50 words per minute correct at that grade level. So we're, we're doing this weekly and we're plotting, this is a software package that we use. Um, we have eight students in the class, so we're lucky <coughs> that uh, we can get through this in a relatively short period of time. But we're charting every week. And, and what we do is see them when they come in. This child was reading 32 words correct per minute when they got to school in the fall of last year. And by June, they need to be reading approximately 50-something at the 50th percentile for fourth. Actually, this is, this is a 
first grade C and fourth grade. Um, but anyway, you can see, started out okay, just below the line, hit the line, and then we saw a problem. They're down below for one, two, three, four. So after just two weeks, we stopped, said, what's going on, what do we need to do, and we provided an intervention. Now, this worksheet, this graph, continues down here, but I didn't um, contain this on this slide because it has a student's name and so forth. But down below here, the intervention would be described. Went to a one-on-one -on -one tutoring program um, three times a week. So going back to those variables, I've just increased the intensity, right, because I'm in a one-on-one -on -one situation now. And we're what we call here double dosing, and that we're not pulling the child out of the reading class to do this instruction. We're pulling them some other time during the day so that they're getting reading instruction for two hours a day or two periods a day instead of just one. So I've taken those four variables and I've tried to maximize them the best as I can. And what happens? Well, you can see the trajectory. Now, we, I took this, um, we stopped here in December, but this student not only continued, um, but we actually moved him up a grade level and started graphing again because he was doing so well. So what do you do on Fridays to measure that? We use this um, software program, it's called Ames Web. We, uh, the kids will have some seat work to do, and then we call them up, and it's just one minute. And it's actually done on the computer, so the child <coughs> has a, the piece of paper in front of them, the teacher has the same passage on the computer, and then if the child uh, misreads a word, you just take your mouse, you click on the word, and after a minute, you stop them. And the computer automatically tallies um, the number of words read correct. And it also tallies, I'll go back, it also tallies the number of errors. These are the number of errors here. And you can see he hit a high of 16, and by here he brought it down considerably. So as the kids are going above the trend line, you know, you'll see that it's <coughs> as well. Okay, this, this student right here, you can see a uh, sixth grade student came in reading about 90 words or so in the fall, had to be up at 106. 75 or so to be at the 50th percentile in sixth grade. You can see that never, pretty significantly dyslexic. First year kid last year. Um, and Ellen, who is back here, who asked the, or made the comment earlier, um, she's our uh, director of teacher training. And we were fortunate enough to pull her out to be able to work with some kids. Well, starting on 12 December 5th, this student started work, this girl started working with Ellen. And what happened? She really um, started to approach grade level. And so we had her in a fifth grade curriculum up until here. This intervention said she's doing well enough that we, she was doing fifth grade passages up to here. She's doing well enough here that we bumped her up into her grade level, this is a sixth grade student, so she's now at grade level. She takes a bit of a dip because the work is harder, but then she regains Ellen's magic and she's starting to come up again. And by the end, she's just about at grade level. And this, this, is, what, this is the only way you can really make informed decisions. You can't go on, boy, Billy had a good week, you know, on Friday. Uh, you have to be looking at data. The third uh, platform of this literacy framework is a response to intervention model. And that simply means that, and this is a public way, not only <coughs> public schools use this, but those that do, this is the way it's supposed to look. That the classroom reading curriculum is supposed to be good enough for 80% of the kids to make adequate progress. That's not what is happening out there given the reading scores I showed you earlier. But then 20% of kids who aren't making adequate progress will kick up into tier two. Tier two is small group instruction. So you go from your class size of 30, uh, maybe you go to a small group instruction of four. And this is in the public schools that are lucky enough to be able to do this. 
Okay, and kids, and about 15% of the 20% who end up here are supposed to respond uh, appropriately to this instruction. 5% don't and get kicked up into level three, which is one-on-one -on -one instruction. So you're increasing the uh, intensity as you move up, and I don't know about the frequency, whether they do it during their reading block or not. Um, again, we try to maximize both the intensity and frequency by double dosing here.